Hey guys, well today we're gonna be making ice cream. Now, we're gonna be making two ice creams, but I'm only gonna be showing you how to make one, and I'll show you where the divergence is for the other. So the first ice cream that we're actually going to be making from start to finish is going to be our cinnamon ice cream, and the other one is going to be an espresso ice cream. All right, let's get started. Now the first thing that we've gotta do is we've gotta take our freezing pot from the um, Cuisinart ice cream maker. I'm gonna have a link in the description so you guys can go and pick this up. A lot of people go and sell these at the uh, garage sales because they tend to make one ice cream or two ice creams in their entire time and they're like, why do I keep this in my house? It's taking up a lot of room, but I have learned that for me, I like to make ice cream for all occasions. I love to do this for the holidays. I love to just do this when I wanna have something that isn't store-bought ice cream. I make a lot better ice cream than what you can purchase at the store, so I always have this at the ready, and I always have a spot in my freezer. So, first thing that we're gonna do before we even get to mixing up anything is we're gonna store this in the freezer, so that way that this has about 24 hours to freeze. All right, let's talk about the ingredient list. So this is a very basic custard ice cream, and a lot of people may say, well, you should be using better ingredients. And the reason I say that, we'll talk about what those ingredients are, is because you can make better ice cream with better ingredients, but for me, I wanna use things that I keep in my house at all times. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is whole milk. Don't go and use skim or 2%, 1%, you have to use whole milk, you need all the fats. Second thing that we need, heavy whipping cream. We're gonna need two cups of each. Now, this is really where all of your ice cream is going to be coming from. You can go and switch these up. You can try making them with some coconut milk or almond milk, but the problem with those, they don't have the fat that these do, so they will not churn and freeze as well. So these have a lot heavier fat content and they tend to work better. So you need the fat for the ice cream to be airy, fluffy, and more of an ice cream texture than have that ice texture. Next thing that we're gonna need is our sugar. Now, I like to keep all of these things in my house. These are basic ingredients, so making ice cream is quick and simple. Salt. Now, since we're making a cinnamon ice cream, I always make it as a base of vanilla. And since I enjoy coffee, I use Tarani, so I always have a bottle of Tarani. Now, if you guys want to use better products, this is where you guys could go and spend a little bit more, more money on real vanilla extract or a vanilla bean, but honestly, this stays in my house at all times. I use it for my coffee, so I use it for my ice cream because I don't have to remember at another point to go and buy something. These are always my staples. And the last thing that I have that you can go and get better is going to be cinnamon. Now. I go and use the Walmart cinnamon. It's the cheap cinnamon that, that you can pick up, but it will always vary on your cinnamon as to how much you're going to use. The better the cinnamon, the less you may use, or the older the cinnamon, the more you may use. The last item, and I have this because of chickens, eggs. I don't think many people keep eggs in their house. I, I think that's kind of a weird thing, but I always have eggs. So I've got to have all of these ingredients and this is what is going to make up our ice cream. Now let's talk about some of the items that we're going to need throughout the process. All right, first item that we're gonna need is going to be a pot that can hold over four cups. I like to have a lid with it, so that way that when it is simmering, we can keep the heat in there. This is just a basic pot. The next thing that we're gonna need is something to store our ice cream mixture once we have cooked it and we need to start chilling it. I love using pasta jars. I clean them out, I bleach them out so they don't have any residual flavor, and then they are ready to go. And I keep them in my pantry at all times so that I have them at the ready. They are a good way to keep everything stored, and when you're in the refrigerator, you give them a little shake to make sure everything is constantly mixing up, and they're ready to go for pouring into our ice cream maker. The next item we're going to need is something to put the ice cream in. And I found that Blue Bunny, their ice cream containers are well built for reusing. So I always keep these and 
I always have at least two or three in my cupboard so that way that I can reuse them for making ice cream. Now let's talk about the last and most important thing for this video that you guys will need. Now, you don't have to go with this brand, but I highly recommend it as it's the one that I have found to work for years. A Cuisinart ice cream maker. Now obviously the cold part is in the freezer, but you have four different parts that go all together, and that way that it all is simple and easy to you know, store. It doesn't have this big footprint that you have to worry about. It's no really bigger than a food processor. I highly, highly recommend if you guys want to keep this recipe, you guys go and visit atticusjames.com. I'm gonna leave a link below and actually leave you guys two recipes, one for the cinnamon and one for the espresso, so that way that you guys have the options to pick which one you guys wanna try. But we're gonna also talk about how you diverge and make different flavors. So before you go and start adding in all of your crazy flavors and ingredients, you have a base. Let's get started with that. All right, now let's go and start making our custard mixture. First thing that we're gonna start with is half a cup of our full cup of sugar. We're gonna pour that in, and then everything else we're going to pour in two cups. So two cups of heavy cream. I'm gonna throw this onto about a six or a medium high. We're going to throw in our two cups of whole milk. Salt for taste. And this is where we stop. At this point, you could go and start making any type of ice cream. If you wanted to go and make a blueberry ice cream, this will be your base. Everything from this point on will actually determine the flavor of the ice cream. So. I tend to like to make all of my ice cream bases with vanilla, however, you don't have to. So, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add my vanilla flavor. A little bit of extra flavor. And then here comes the hard part for cinnamon. Determining how much cinnamon you add. Now, for me, I go based off of taste. So we're just going to sprinkle it in there and then we're going to stir it up. Use a long spoon. We're just going to get this all mixed up. We're gonna be slowly cooking this until we get to a light boil. But we're going to be tasting this periodically so that way that we can determine how it tastes. At this point, we are wanting to find out what it tastes like so that way that we know what our ice cream is going to taste like. Err on the side of caution with this as you go through because you can always add more, you cannot remove it. So if you like more cinnamon, that's great, but start off with a smaller amount and build your way up to that. That way that you're not overpowering the senses. Let's get this to a boil. All right, so now while we are waiting for this mixture to boil, I'm going to start making my espresso ice cream. This is going to be a fairly easy process. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up some sweet espresso or just some espresso bean finely ground. You can do this with the whole bean. However, I do prefer it ground and if you wanna grind it yourself, that's even better. You're gonna get a more rich aroma and flavor, but being easy, I wanted to make it so I didn't have to go to a lot of effort. So I went and picked up something that was already ground and all we're going to do is put our two cups of cream together into a jar that we're going to be using for the ice cream mixture. So this will sit overnight, 24 hours. We're just going to pour our espresso powder in. We're gonna cap it. And we're going to shake this throughout the day. Every time that we're in the refrigerator, this is going to get shook. As much as we can, we wanna get this really well shook. So that way that you're really getting every ounce of uh, powder and all of that heavy cream really mixing and mixing that flavor up so that, way that you have a nice strong flavor. Now I like to use half a cup of this for my one container of ice cream. You can use one cup, you can use a quarter cup, depending on how 
you like your espresso or your coffee flavor will really determine how much you put in here. A cup of it is a very strong flavor. It's almost drinking it, uh, a straight cup of espresso. Half a cup is not as strong, but it's still very strong. So if you are just looking for a coffee flavor, I recommend uh, Folgers Instant Coffee, something that is going to be dissolvable in the cream, and then using a lot less than you would expect and working your way up. So you want to go and make your mixture and kind of taste it. You're going to have that issue that it's not going to be sweet or taste like ice cream, but you can taste the amount of coffee flavor and add more as you need to. That's why you have 24 hours to work with this before we go and actually add it to our mixture. Now, this is where that divergence point would have been for the espresso. You're going to mix up your two cups of heavy cream in here and then not have an extra two cups. So it will be these two cups of heavy cream and then two cups of milk rather than just heavy cream and milk. So that's where your, your point for making this ice cream would be. Again, the recipe will be on atticusjames.com. All right, let's get this to a boil. Now, right before we really start getting to our boil, we're going to crack our eggs and we're going to put our egg yolks into one bowl that we're going to be mixing in and our egg whites into another. These you can use for something else. You can make a healthy dish out of it. You can just use them for whatever. I like to cook them up, throw them into dishes that I'm making so they're a nice little extra benefit in the dishes that I'm making. So we're going to crack these. We're just going to get five yolks. And this will be our fifth egg. All right, this is now where we're going to add in our last half cup of sugar. All right, now we're gonna add in our half cup of sugar. We're just gonna pour this in here, and here's where you guys don't have to use a stand mixer. You can use a uh, hand mixer, or you could even just use a whisk. However, for this, I prefer my stand mixer for everything, so we're going to whip that up now. Let's get to it. Now due to my battery not wanting to um, be charged, I just lost that footage, but what we've done is we've added our sugar in and we've mixed this up. Now what we're going for here is a very pale yellow, almost white mixture. I'm gonna show you that. We're going to make sure that we scrape our edges so that way that we get everything incorporated. You don't really want any egg bits or sugar bits that haven't been nicely mixed up. So make sure that you scrape your edges. And this should be the consistency, uh, the color of about butter. It's gonna be a very white yellow. All right, now we are going to start seeing that we've got some bubbles happening. Now this is not going to be actual the bubbling that we're looking for, the boiling that we're looking for, we're looking for a light, a little bit heavier of a, a, a boil than that. So let's just wait a few more minutes. All right, now we have a light boil. We're gonna actually turn this off and we're gonna let this sit for a few minutes. So that way that it cools down just a bit. So that way that we do not cook our eggs and scramble them. We do not want to do that as you do not want scrambled ice cream eggs. All right, so now we have let this cool for a hot minute. So it's actually cool enough for us to touch the pan and we're going to start adding this into it. Now, the way that you are actually said to do this in the mix in the Cuisinart book is that you add this hot, but you add it very slowly so you don't cook it. Personally, I like to bring this down in temperature a little bit. It does increase my cook time the second time, but that's okay because I know that I will never scramble my eggs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start this on a very low stir, and we're just gonna start adding this in. We're gonna add all of the mixture in, 
making sure that we scrape all of it out. We're just gonna use the spoon that we used earlier to make sure that we get all of that out of it. Everything's going back in, but we wanna make sure everything is nice and mixed. I'm gonna bump this up to a two and a three, just to really make sure everything gets well mixed. And then we're gonna turn it off. And we're going to add this back into our first pot. So let's go and do that. Making sure to scrape anything that's in here back into the pot. You will have some sugars that did not fully melt, but you're just gonna scrape them back into there and you'll get them in your mixture and everything will be good. All right, back to the stove. All right, now that we're back on the stove, we're going to kick this up to about a seven, a little bit of a medium high, high heat, so that way that this will cook. And this is the time that you're gonna really want to be using a wooden spoon. These will come in handy because you will be able to tell when everything's ready. We are looking for this to thicken. Now the way that we're going to figure that out is we're gonna be mixing and we're gonna see that it's gonna start forming a film on the back of this. What you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna take your finger and you're just gonna wipe down the edge of it and you're gonna see that the sides kind of stay and the middle is gone. That way that it's nice and thick and it will be ready at that point to start cooling, to put into our jars, to put into the refrigerator. So let's start cooking. All right, so now we have pulled this off the heat because we've actually reached the point that we can go and um, it's thick and we can run our finger down there. So we're gonna let this sit. Do not let this boil. Do not stop stirring this. This is one of those things that can happen really fast and you want to make sure you are on top of it. But you want a nice thick mixture so that way that you have a nice thick creamy ice cream and this will give you that, that normal texture that you get like store-bought. So we're gonna let this sit and then we are going to jar it up. All right, now it is time to finally put our mixture into the jars, so that way that we can put them into the refrigerator overnight, so they'll cool, they will thicken up a little bit more, and they'll be ready to be churned tomorrow morning. All right, let's do it. We have our nice, thick mixture, and we're just gonna pour this in. Don't want to miss any of those good bits in there. I'm going to get that all scraped up. I'll see you guys in 24 hours. All right, so now it has been 24 hours. These are fully chilled. This is fully frozen. We're going to put this all together. First we throw that on, and then your paddle actually goes with the nub down, and it all sticks in there. And then we're just going to lock it in place and this is good to go. Now, I do wanna shake these up first before we start pouring them in there. And then we're just gonna pop this all in, making sure to get all of the little bits out that we can. Okay, so now at this point, it is about the consistency of soft serve. So we're gonna take our container, and we're going to clean off as much as we can from the paddles. So we don't lose all of this. But I do like to call this the uh, ice cream maker's treat, because you can lick it clean, and nobody has to know but you. Put that upside down and save it for later. So now we're gonna come over here and just take this out. Like you can see, it is very soft. It's not gonna have that nice firm texture yet. And that's okay. Right now we are just looking for churned ice cream. 
this will freeze and solidify a lot more once we are actually in the freezer. So what I recommend is making this at least four hours before you're going to serve it if you do not want it to be this soft serve consistency. And that's it. While there is still some in here, we can come back in here with a harder spatula, really scrape it out, but we have our ice cream. And I just throw the lid back on it, lock it all down in place, and it's ready to go back into the freezer. So that's how you make ice cream. Very, very simple. And the nice thing for me is that these are ingredients that I keep in my house at all times. The ice cream maker just goes in the freezer the night before, and it's ready to go the next day. You cook everything while you're cooking dinner, and it's not that difficult to make this really high quality, tasty, custom ice cream. And after you play with the different ice creams for a while and find what really fits you, you're gonna be sitting there thinking, ooh, you know, I have a really good brownie recipe. That might go really well in a Bailey's ice cream or some other ice cream that you go in and start playing with. Guys, I highly recommend you go and pick up one. Even if you just do it once or twice in the holidays per year, that's fine. You will wow everybody by bringing homemade ice cream to your events or to just having at your dinner table. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys will like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you're notified every time we put out new videos. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.